Within this video, I'll teach you how to make a simplistic but custom banner for any type of advertisement. You can either animate it or just export the picture for your promotions in any size you want. To begin with, I've used resources from freepick.com, I'll leave the links in the description below. You can of course use a different website, I just happen to like this one. And I've inserted torn paper and I've downloaded something like that. And I'll show you everything to use without any editing software, just PowerPoint. Then I typed in brush stroke and just downloaded some kind of brush strokes for this bottom element. And the last one was some hand-drawn pattern elements for the background. This is the most complicated element because actually this is what I did here. All right, how to actually use and edit it. The first will be torn paper. My second one will be brush strokes. And the third one, the most advanced one, will be this background pattern. Okay, let me head over to PowerPoint. For the background, uh, this is the most difficult pattern, but I will start with it. I want a correction or actually a color, I want to decrease the color saturation because basically I want to use those elements and delete the white background. I can remove the white background. There is an experimental function in PowerPoint. It's not yet fully correctly working, but we can go to color, set transparent color and remove the white color like that. But as you can see, still so many white distortions are around here. So it will be much better if we use the classic remove background feature that works very well. PowerPoint basically wants to remove everything, but I want to keep a couple of those, let's call them shapes, mark areas to keep. I'll mark this area to keep and a couple of them. Now, the problem with the, this tool is that let's just roughly select some of the elements. For example, this one as well. I want a pattern. And as you can see, PowerPoint is sometimes struggling a little bit, but that's no big deal. I'll give it a bit of time. I will also enable this element. Let me enable this uh, bottom part. PowerPoint doesn't want to cooperate. Come on. Okay. Now it's perfect. Now this shape. Okay. 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 This one PowerPoint really don't let me down. I'm recording a tutorial showcasing how you work and you do this. Okay. Perfect. Now this element, let's make this the last because I don't want to overdo it. Perfect. We have just the right amount of elements, keep changes. And we have a beautiful background for our design. Nice. For this one, it will be much simpler. So I just crop the picture down. And similarly to the previous option, I use remove background. This time it should go much smoother. Okay. It did a perfect job and I have this element basically ready. Now for the torn paper, again, remove background. What happens? PowerPoint, of course, removes everything. I want to mark the area to keep. Hey, dude, keep that bottom part and be a bit more precise. You can see much of this tutorial relies on creating actually those elements. But if you want to use only PowerPoint, no third party software, this is how we have to roll. Now we can finally start the design for the background. I want you to select format background, go to a color and just use a dark color. I usually click on more fill colors. I go to custom, I enlarge it so I have a bit more space to work with. And I do like those blue backgrounds. It depends on what design do we want. But this time I'll remain on the gray one because I want a more black approach for a neutral look. If this would be a Christmas sale or something, we can of course go for green, but here I'll go for black. Okay. Now those torn pieces, since I've prepared everything, I can just shift click to perfectly rotate this around and I'll put it on the right side. You can see it should be a bit smaller. We basically prepared this element. I press Ctrl D to duplicate it. I will rotate it around. And no, I do not want those additional options. I'll put it on the left side this time. Perfect. Now for this element, it is just an informational piece that we will most likely put some percentage like we did here above. And this would be basically ready. Now for the background pattern, this is the like most beautiful part of this design. In my opinion, I want to put it here. I want to right click and go to format picture. If you use PowerPoint 2019, 365 or 221, you should have on the picture options. You should have the picture transparency option with the picture transparency. I can increase the transparency to a really high amount, like 94, 95%. So we have something in the back 
not disturbing the actual design. I'll make sure that this is in the back by right clicking and sending it to back. The final piece of this design would be to put in some text. I assume that you know how to put in text into PowerPoint. You go to insert, use the text box or from the shapes. If you have newer versions of PowerPoint, the first basic shape is also a text box. So we will start with big sale. I have plenty of those big bulky fonts installed for perfectly for this kind of usage. So I'll just use one of them. This time I use Barlow. Maybe it's a bit too narrow, but it shows you the idea behind the, the design. If it's too narrow, I can always make the letter a bit more loose. It's still a bit narrow, but you get the idea. Let's go again to insert or simply duplicate the existing text box you have, put it above it, go to home. I often resize it so this font selection window doesn't come in the way I want to really properly see this one. And now I'll search for a script font. This looks horrible. I've actually used, um, I think, caveat, caveat, caveat. I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhat well. Okay, you always know better. Caveat. Caveat. Same. All right, I will use this difficult to pronounce font. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And of course, for the color, you should change the color to something more vibrant and bright. I think it's the original red that we have here and big sale just looks weird. Let's call it January sale and we can duplicate it onto here for a 50 or 40% discount. I'll make it smaller and this brush, it can be of course resized to your liking. I can resize it like that. Maybe that would this making making this smaller. The design part isn't as difficult. You can at any given point go to design, slide size, custom slide size, and change the slide size. For example, I want 1000 pixels per 250 pixels. I press OK. I press ensure fit so all the elements fit. And what do we have here? We basically have another type of banner in a different size. Of course, I would need to resize the existing element on, on the slide. That's that's obvious. For animations, you don't need much here. I would probably go to animations, open the animation pane and just do a little grow shrink on some of the elements. If that looks weird to you, you can always double click, go to this effect, enable a bit of smoothing, enable auto reverse so it comes back after it animates and on the timing, just make sure it rewinds when done playing and it will play on the repeat section. I will select until end of slide and now it would play back and forth. Of course, I could uh, increase the duration and this would be my final design. It would come towards me and back towards me and back. I could, of course, copy this existing animation, animation painter onto some text, double click on it go to effects and I would reduce the text size to 125. Now I right click on the animations, make them start with previous and this would be my finalized design. If you'd like to learn more PowerPoint in this fashion, you have links to my online courses in the description below and probably on the right within the YouTube cards. Thank you very much for staying until the end of the tutorial and see you in other ones exactly like that.